News Radio 700 WLW, Mark Blazer, and my buddy Drew Hansen. I'm so pumped. You have no idea. I know, man. Without further ado, let's welcome to the show the one and only Bruce Pritchard, brother love. Bruce, welcome to the show. And I heard you're standing in four degree weather right now, trying to find a quiet Jeez. spot. <laughs> Yes, it's freezing here. I'm in Detroit. If you guys um, obviously listen to the news and everybody's talking about how bad it is in Detroit and Chicago, well, you know what? It's true. It is freezing here. Uh, doing Astronomicon this afternoon and uh, hopefully going to be getting home to Houston at some point tonight. But yeah, it's a crazy inside. So I tried to find a middle ground. Uh, where it's a little bit quiet, so I can talk to you guys. The lonely place is it's freezing cold. So. <laughs> this probably is not boding well with your Texas blood, I would imagine, right about now. No, man, I just came off of a week in Costa Rica and oh. come right in here. Oh, jeez. When we landed, I'm looking out the window, and all I see is white. I thought we were in the clouds, and then we touched down, and I was like, oh, my God. But, uh, yeah, it's been, uh, been crazy, been crazy. So, so think, like, about like a year and a half ago, obviously, right around then, when, when you started Something to Wrestle, which, of course, is your podcast, did you envision it uh, at, the, at the height of what it's doing right now? I mean, you go into it going, all right, we're going to go in, we're going to kick ass and all of that, but did you realize that it would do as well as it actually is doing? You know, we, we really went into it as a way to sell mortgages over com, and, and I'm, I'm serious. We never thought that it would be nearly as huge as it is today, and it's um, a testament to that fan base. It's a testament to the audience that takes the time to, to download the show and listen and, and give us their support. So if you were to ask me a year and a half, two years ago, if I would have thought that we would be where we are now, I'd have laughed in your face. <laughs> and you and you've kind of become a t shirt promoting company also in that, you know, you're 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 able to take little snippets from the show and it's I think it's genius for all the cult fans of the show, but the, the average person maybe walking the street doesn't understand what doot 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 means or, you know, anything like this. And we were listening on the way down and um to the best of because I wanted to get to, uh Blazer acclimated a little bit to the most of the show he could with with, you know, the highlights and things like that. But, uh, yeah, th this has opened so many doors with the Comic-Cons and the things like that that I don't think you normally would have been doing, would you? Well, you know, absolutely. You know, every once in a while we do, uh, I'd maybe go do a wrestling convention here and there. But, no, it's, it's opened the doors to that. It's opened the doors to live shows. And we're going to be coming to Columbus on March 11th, and, and it's – we're we're touring, doing at least you know two one two live shows every month now, and uh, it, it's nuts. It's kind of it's kind of crazy when you walk into a big convention like this, and and just walking by right now was a guy with an I used to be over shirt. That's one of my shirts over bruceprincher dot com. So it, it, it's it kind of boggles the mind a little bit. So uh, you're coming, you said, to Columbus. Explain what that is, what you guys will actually be doing in Columbus and where you're going to be, Bruce. Well, we're going to be uh, doing a live something to wrestle with Bruce Pritchard and Conrad Thompson. And what that is is we basically do a lot of the stuff that we do on the show, but we customize it for the markets where we are. And uh, audience, a lot of audience participation the audience asks the questions. They kind of dictate the tone of where the show is going to be. And we play the greatest hits, if you will. But uh, it, it's just a live, absolute fun show. And if you enjoy our podcast, then by God, you're going to enjoy the live show because we step it up a notch or two. A few weeks uh, back for the 25th anniversary of Raw, you got to reprise the Brother Love character. But what I was really wondering was, obviously, uh, there's a lot of the roster that loves the show and they're kind of open about it. And Corey Graves, I think, has mentioned even on, on WWE Network that he watch, listens to the show. Did you kind of hide from anybody a little bit from some of the content you've gotten into on the show or, or maybe somebody that doesn't like some of your impressions, which are incredible, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely not. As a matter of fact, you know, every every single impression that I've ever done, I like to call them caricatures. But every single one I've done, I've done to the people's face, and I I I, I like to like to bust balls, and I'll do it right to their face. So uh, that that's never never been an issue. And um, there was yeah, nobody to hide from, and had fun seeing everybody, and it was all a good time. Some of my friends actually have come to hate me because there's so many uh, nuances 
on the show that you can't help but pick up when you listen to the show every week. And I mean, I, I'll listen to a five hour episode sh- or five hour long show and want more. But but I'll pick up like I, I've caught myself now going chat me up when I'm talking to somebody <laughs> or or like I'll go, damn it, pal. Damn it! And my, you know, my buddies don't have. Yeah. That's the Vince McMahon, yeah. which which my buddies don't have any idea about. What I was trying wrestling, wrestling. Yeah, yeah. What, is this why he wants it to be sports entertainment? Because Vince can't say wrestling. <laughs> yeah, you know, probably so. But no, I, th- I think that the the best, you know, the be- best Vinceism for me was always the uh, pronouns foul where he would just kind of look and <laughs> and that's where and, people buy the tickets that's the website where they're buying the tickets for the show isn't it there Brian? you go <laughs> did you like that segue that's, that's pretty good i like it i what i was wanting to tell blazer about was the million dollar man this is my favorite episode of the podcast was the the explaining of the million dollar man and how he would actually if vince was a wrestler he wanted that gimmick and i was trying <laughs> He he would be that gimmick, yeah. He w- was that gimmick in real life. And I was you told a story, and I didn't want to dare try to do justice. And I know you're standing in the cold, but if you have a second to tell this story, it is incredible. I no, love- we we were Vince and I had been, uh, and it was actually a trip from Houston to LaGuardia, and we had been down, and we had, were renegotiating our television deal in Houston, and we're coming back. And back in those days. You know, this is 1987, and there was still smoking on planes, if you can imagine that. And in first class, a lot of times, there would only be two rows of first class. Well, the first row would be non-smoking, and the second row would be smoking. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, that's a long way to separate people, so sure, you yeah. wouldn't get any of the secondhand smoke, of yeah. course. Yeah, it was, it's, it's kind of nuts. But we, we were sitting there, it's, it's early in the morning, and uh, I mean... It's funny the things that you remember, but I remember it was the first time I ever had eggs Benedict, too. I didn't even know what the hell it was. <laughs> Were they the but same they day? It, I ate it. It was good. Um, you know, did you hear that? It was good on an airline, even. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. What do but you know? Yeah. We're, we, we take off, and we're, we're flying, and all of a sudden, man, the guy behind us lights up. And then turns around and says, hey, pal. Do you mind uh, putting the cigarette out? <laughs> and the guy's like, well, yeah, I, I would mind. Um, you know, I'm, I smoke. Uh, <laughs> I paid for my seat. It's a smoking seat. I'm going to smoke. You know, say what, I'll give you 100 bucks. Just put, put the cigarette out. And the guy's like, man, I don't want your money. I, you know, I'm a smoker. I like to smoke. Uh, the, the light's off, man. I can smoke now and just, uh, I'm good. <laughs> All right, pal, 500 bucks. 500 bucks. Put the cigarette out. I just, I'm allergic and I want to smell it. Uh, you know, I give you 500 bucks, put the cigarette out. Damn it, pal. And the guy's like, you know, no, man. I paid, you know, I paid for my seat. Uh, I, I, I paid to smoke. So, no, I'm not going to do it. The guy's just, All right, pal, I'll buy you a ticket. I'll give you <laughs> 500 bucks. I'll pay for your ticket. Just put, put the cigarette out. The guy goes, God damn, finally put the, put the cigarette out. And Vince is we're peeling off hundred dollar bills. The guy says, "No, nah, man, bothers you that bad? I'll put it out." But he it didn't was. take the cash. <laughs> no, nah, I didn't even take the cash. But I, I looked at Vince after this whole exchange, and I just looked at him and I said, "Oh my God, you are the million dollar man." <laughs> Everybody's got a price. And pal. I used I used that example for years of Ted DiBiase trying to explain to Ted exactly how to be the million dollar man. That is so because awesome. of the, it, it's like boom. He goes here, you go there. That's and, and that's the here, kind of thing on the here. on the podcast that when you catch those stories and they and a lot of times you you'll give a little and Conrad gets a little frustrated and tries to get a little more out of you. But when you when he finally gets it out of you, man, these stories are priceless. Yeah, and, so, and sometimes you know, bless his little heart. <laughs> um, there, there's no more really to give sometimes, and he thinks because of the rumor and innuendo and all the BS that has been out there for so many years that there's more to the story. Sometimes there's just not. And and that's the, you know, you, you have the fascination of these incredible stories that, unfortunately, you know, it's, it's not. The, the it's hype not is the more than the actual reality. The rumor exactly. and innuendo is more than the real, real truth. Yep. We're talking exactly. to Bruce, we're talking to Bruce Pritchard, brother love, of course, and something to wrestle is his podcast, and it's uh, 
it's it's incredibly entertaining listening not only to the podcast, but it, it's such a delight having you on with us today. This is really cool. Anybody listening can go check him out in Columbus. It's um, the same night as the Fast Lane pay per view, which is going to be at Nationwide Arena up in Columbus. Again, where are you guys going to be doing your show live, Bruce? We're going to be at the Phoenix Banquet Center, and it starts at, I believe, 2 o'clock, so that you got plenty of time to come see our show and then make it down to the WWE pay per view and get your tickets over at Pronouns Pal. Dot com And I literally, right before I came out here, I met with uh, the guy that's doing the tickets, and tickets are going fast. I just added uh, more seats, but those are going to go quick, too. So we've got VIP tickets, general admission. They're still available, but you better grab them up. This one's going to be a sellout, and we're going to have us a hot time in Columbus, if you will, baby. You had uh, – uh... You had mentioned uh, 1987 and Vince. It reminded me, like, Primetime Wrestling, which you, that was your original job, was the producer of uh, Primetime Wrestling on USA back in that. Before you were Brother Love, that was originally your position with, right. with the company. So that's always my background whenever I'm, because my office is also my, my living room. So it's, I'm, in, I'm at the phase of Primetime Wrestling when you were doing commentary with Mike McGurk. And that they were like, I don't know if they were trying you out as a commentator or, or whatever else. But the one thing I did notice in this time period was a few things. And we are, we're having this argument in Ohio now about Chief Wahoo. Do you ever think there's a time that the WWE will have to roll back and kind of censor some of their, like, you know, Jesse used to call Coco Beware Buckwheat. And, you know, Bobby used to call Tito Santana Chico. I mean, do you think there's ever a time that the WWE will go, okay, maybe we shouldn't have this on the network or anything like that? Or do they just assume nobody's digging that deep into it? Well, you know, I think that when you look at it and it's, look at it from a historic point of view, it teaches a lot of lessons, frankly. And like you say, I go back and watch – some of the old shows, and you go, wow, this doesn't age well. No, yeah, but, but so much of it you, doesn't. Oh, yeah. Like but the dog napping of Matilda. Way, <laughs> yes. Look at it in a different way, and it can be a teaching tool kind of too as to what not to do and how far that we have come um, in business, but just in our society overall, because I, I, I just would shiver with some of the things that I listened to from back in the day. It's like, oh, my God, how did they? And you could never do that today, but how the hell did we do it then? Yeah, well, I, it's, I think it was just the times. I just don't think people had that the social conscious, conscious and a lot of that might be the Internet. Well, just... you know what also here, I, if I could add, like you, you think about 70 sitcoms, you know, Archie Bunker and Sanford and Son. Right. Those things would never fly now. It's the same kind of thing, Drew, with this. It is dated, like you were saying. It looks that way, and it worked then, but now, uh, no, not so much. Yeah, not so much. When you watch it now, you kind of go, "Oh boy!" And I don't know if I'll ever. A little bit. I don't know if I'll get the chance that this is a really. You say you get a lot of specific questions from people, and and they cover on the on the show and and on your Facebook uh, live and whatnot. But this one, it 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 always has bothered me, and I, I I've, I've got to hear it straight from you. Uh, we just celebrated the 30th anniversary of the big NBC main event with Hulk versus uh, Andre. And a lot of people remember this, even if they weren't huge wrestling fans. Because what, what was it, like 15 million people watched that that night? Yep. So this is what bothered me, and it's always bothered me. The Hepner's controversy, obviously in real life they were twins, but it was made to believe that the Million Dollar Man had paid for one of these Hepner's to get plastic surgery to, to fix the uh, match. It sounds ridiculous, but it was also genius at the time. But one of the Hep exactly. one of the Hepners refereed the main event of WrestleMania four in the tournament, and nobody even said anything. <laughs> no one will notice. Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> it was a month prior. Yeah. That just always bothered me with continuity things, you know. And especially when you talk about Dick Ebersol being so involved, there was a continuity issue on on Saturday night's main event. In, and I'm sounding like such a nerd right now, to, to, but the list, wrestling fans will get it. The Bulldogs had a two out of three with the Hart Foundation. One of the falls was, was a disqualification in favor of the Bulldogs. They didn't get the belts because it was a disqualification in one of the falls. Two years later, same show, Saturday night's main event, demolition, Brain Busters, same finish, but the Brain Busters won the belts. One of the falls was, 
<laughs> it just yeah. continuity. Who remembers that? I remember Who that. Remembering that. These things have bothered me for 20, 30 years, and now I've got you. Got now I've got you here. Well, and uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> but you know, a lot of times you probably you really are sorry up. now that you're talking to me. <laughs> yeah, no, we, we would bring that kind of stuff up, and he would say, "Nobody's going to remember that." It worked then; it'll work now. And it's still he still uses that. I think he thinks a lot of people yes. don't remember it. Okay, uh, definitely. <laughs> Bruce Pritchard, brother, love. Thank you, man, for spending time with us today. I know you're really, really busy. Continued success with the podcast called, of course, something to wrestle. And uh, early happy birthday to you because I know you got a birthday coming up next month. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And looking forward to seeing everybody there March 11th. And uh, get your tickets pronouncepal.com. But do it quick because we're going to sell out. Thank you, brother. Blast, man. Look forward to seeing you guys. Thanks, Bruce. Thanks, man. There he is, Bruce Pritchard, brother Uh love. And Drew is geeking out over here. We are getting yelled at by Dave. We got to go to break. I sound like such a geek, but I don't even care. (laughs) Don't even care. It's Mark Blazer, and over there is Drew Hanson, who's all geeked out like a. He's like a little schoolgirl over there. Like, I can't believe we have Bruce on the air with us. (laughs) How's my hair look? Uh, This is News Radio 700.